Hello my friends, welcome back. We have been building the card game called War for the Fiby Python curriculum available at www.yby.in. In fact, we are almost done with the game. We have built the entire game logic. We have seen how the players play these games, how the moves happen and how the game gets over. What we'll do in this video, however, is equally important, which is to print the status of these lists that are going on, uh, you know, that are being manipulated in this program. And this is important because only through these lists do we understand how the game dynamics actually work and also if you're doing everything correctly. So we would like to know the status of the cards, for example, the length of these lists, the player cards, the compute cards and the table cards. Now, there are so many places that we can put this print statements, but bear in mind if you have lots and lots of prints, then it can also get very confusing. So what we are going to do is that we are going to put a print statement of the sort shown here. Very simple, you know, player cards, length of it, computer card, length of it, and so on and so forth. One logical place where we can put this is at the end of the inner loop. Remember, there are two loops. There's a game complete loop. There's a move complete loop. So at the end of the move complete loop, I think it's quite a logical place we can put this in. But it turns out that the values generated by this can still be confusing, especially in case of war. So what we will see in this video is how do we interpret these values, how we understand these values, uh, look a bit more closely at the game dynamics and through this process we'll identify one more location where you know you could put these print statements and get a little bit more clarity. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is to just come in here. Remember I want to put this in my at the end of my you know in, in inner loop. So I just come in here now this is my inner loop and I'm just aligning it with all these if else and so on and so forth. So you know I can I can show you here what I mean. So if I were to let's say you know um, compress this thing out let's say all these you know all these statements then i'm basically just putting this statement at the end of my inner loop which is say over here and the indentation here is important right so i just go and say okay look print you know let's say um, say player cards is you know let's say length of say player uh, player cards computer cards say len of compute cards and finally let's say uh, table cards say len of table cards now this is a simple print statement now when I run my code, notice at the end of the, you know, um, of the first inner, the inside loop, this statement is getting printed. Now, in fact, the values put out by this are quite easy to understand in case of a clear victory. For example, both players started with, you know, um, yeah, both of them started with 26, 26, in this case, player one, and hence the player ended up with 27 cards and computer ended up with 25 cards. Next, the computer one, Basically, both of them put out one card to the table pile. You know, computer won, which means that computer kind of got back the card it had lost. So it became 26. Player lost the card. So it is now again 26, 26. So this is quite easy to understand when there's a clear victory. Let's see this, uh, you know, a little bit more carefully here. Basically, the point is, you no. Know, so, you know, um, like I said, in, in this case, 26, 26, player win, player won, and player ends up with 27 cards. And the exact reverse over here. However, there's a very important point to understand and keep in mind is that in between these stages, remember we are printing this at the end of the inner loop. In between this, there is one phase where the table cards had two cards, which was the two cards that have been put out here. And at that point, both the player and the, you know, like in this first move, both of them had actually 25 cards. And these two table cards went to the player and hence it became 27. But the point is we are now, right now, not printing this. Let's see this a bit more graphically. Remember the game started 26, 26, 0. I put out one card each, so it became 25, 25, 2. Now this is not a surprise because the sum of the player cards, computer cards, and the table cards must always be 52. Table cards, you know, it turns out in this case, computer one. So both the table cards went to the computer it became 25 27 now this state in between is something that we are not reporting yet if i were to summarize this let's say my player had np cards to start uh, you know at the beginning of a move computer had nc cards now keep in mind that in the beginning of a move no matter what happens the table cards will always be zero now once it both throw a card each it becomes np minus one nc minus one table cards becomes two assuming the player wins so you know two cards go to the player and it becomes np plus one and this remains NC minus one. So the point is that, you know, 
in a clear victory when there's no war the winning player ends up with one extra card the losing player ends up losing one card now i have shown this particular step in red because this is what we are not printing but we can verify my claim here the winning player the player wins here i ended up with from 26 to 27 computer lost i ended up from 26 to 25 computer won player lost one card computer gained one card it's so always the winning losing one and let's say the losing card uh, winning winning gaining one and losing losing player losing one card it's so always like that but things get a little bit more involved when we have a war right now notice here what's going on so i say okay 26 26 it just so happened that for this particular example there was a war to start with so both of them end up with 22 22 this is quite easy to understand because they put out one card each war began they put out three more cards so that's why my table card has got eight cards 22 and 22 but suddenly i notice that after this player as one player has entered with 31 and this can be a little bit confusing because there were eight cards on the table how did it go to 31 well what really happened is that in between these two there was a time when there was you know both player and the computer put out one card each so both of them ended up with 21 and table cards had become 10. now this is now this state we are not printing you know right now because we are printing at the end of the inner loop so we don't print that state where the player threw out one card but if we understand this then this stop is logical because remember car table cards at 10 all those 10 went to the player and it became 31. So, you know, if we keep this in mind, then it kind of becomes a bit more clear. We can see this more graphically over here. For example, let's say my player had 25 cards to start with. Computer had, let's say, 27 cards. I put out the first card on top. So, there was a state created where I had 24, 26 and 2. Uh, now, this state I'm not printing. I just noticed that there's a war created. So, I get both of these guys to put out three extra cards. So, 24 becomes 20, 21. 26 becomes 23 and my table cards becomes 8. This I do print. Next, I get both of these players to throw one card each. So, table becomes 10, player becomes 20, computer becomes 22. Again, keep in mind 20 plus 22 plus 10 is always going to be 52. I mean, the sum of these three is always 52. Again, this state I'm not printing. I just show you the final situation. The player has won. So, all the cards went to the player 30, 22 and 0. Now, if I were to summarize this in a single table, and this is quite interesting, actually, it requires a little bit of thinking, but very logical. Let's say before a move, my player had NP cards, computer had NC cards. Again, remember at the start of the move, table cards must be zero. Player and computer both throw one card each. So both end up with NP minus one and NC minus one, respectively. Table cards is now two. What that means is that once I throw three additional cards, I'll end up with NP minus four, NC minus four. You can put in values for NP and NC to confirm. And my table card will have eight values, eight, eight cards. Now I throw one card each and which means that I end up with NP minus five and NC minus five table cards ends up being 10. Now, again, this state right now I'm not printing. However, because I'm assuming the player wins in just one war, all these 10 cards will come to the player and I'll end up with, let's say, NP plus five and NC minus five. The point is. In case of a war, which happens only once, the winning player will end up with five more cards the losing player will end up with five less cards and that's exactly what we see for example in the you know in the example that we just saw you know for example let's take this i started with 26 26 after the war which resolved in just one attempt player ended up being 31 computer ended up being 21 so you know notice the cap of five now we can actually extend this and see what happens when there are for example two wars now just go through this logic you know i come to a point where the first resolution does not solve my war so they become 10 cards on the card table card np minus 5 nc minus 5 i get them to throw three more cards so np minus 8 nc minus 8 table cards become 16 they both throw one additional card so np minus 9 nc minus 9 table becomes 18 at this point there's a winner and it turns out all the winning cards go to the player so nc plus 9 and nc minus 9 now go through this logically go through this solely this is very very sensible again the lines in red we are not printing here in our code that's why i've just shown it that way but you can verify that if the war happens for let's say two times then the player that wins will end up with nine extra cards the player that loses will end up with let's say nine less cards and that's exactly what we saw for example here both players had 26 cards to start with you know this i had done earlier the screen capture kind of captures this Notice 26, 26, the war lasted two times. I ended up with 35 cards for the player because eventually player wins. So 26 plus 9 is 35. I ended up with 
17 cards for the computer because 26 minus 9 is 17. War lasted two times and ended up in nine cards, you know, extra or nine cards lower. Now, of course, you can go through it slowly and convince yourself this is all correct. In fact, I can extend this logic to three three wars. In that case, you will find that the winning player will end up with 13, losing player will end up, winning player will end up gaining 13, losing player will end up losing 13. Now, once again, the picture comes out very clearly that if, let's say, we added one more print statement, which is after both these cards had been thrown, then we will get more clarity. In fact, we'll see the cards moving exactly the way we are showing you here. So we can just go to our code and do it. So I, let's say, you know, say that, okay, let's take this statement, print. I'm going to put it at a place where both of them have put in one card and that is at this location. That is just before the move, you know, just before I start comparing. So if I put this over here, now mark the indentation, now there'll be more clarity to every step here. Basically, I say, okay, look, I've thrown one card each. My computer is 25. Player is my player is 25. Computer is 25. Table has two. Player wins, so computer gets 27, 25. Both of them throw card each. So 26, 24. Table cards is two. Computer wins. You know, again, you can just follow this. Let's just see for a situation where a war happens. Um, let me just play this for a few times so that what happens now right now I've set the limit to 100 so you know the game doesn't get over that easily okay now notice here what happened war has happened here but let's analyze this from here right so player had 27 computer had 25 both of them threw a card each so player ended up with 26 computer with 24 table cards has two now I say a war begins so when the war begins I end up with 23 uh, and 21 respectively because both of them threw uh, three cards each table ended up with eight now it turns out that you know i have got a winner in the player so basically player played one card computer played one card so it's 22 20 table cards is 10 player has one and hence i end up with 32 20 and 0. now again you can verify there was only one war here so 27 has become 32 increase of 5 25 has become 20. very very logical but worth thinking through it because that is where clarity of thought comes in and this will greatly influence the way you are programming. I hope you found this useful. Uh, in general, if you find that learning this way by building activities is something that you enjoy, something that makes you understand better, do look at our website because we have many, many, many such activities. Take care. Thank you so much. Enjoy programming.